Madam President, you have a quorum. Wonderful. Uh, next, we have our voluntary Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next, we have. Do I hear a motion to approve the September 16th, 2020 City Council meeting minutes? Motion. So moved. Move Rick Hirschfeld. I hear moved. Russia. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Mayo. Moved by Penny, I mean, Councillor Ricketts, and second by Hirschfeld is what I heard. Um, any discussion on these minutes? Hearing none. Uh, we'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do a roll call for this. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 First, aye. Abstentions? Aye. Okay, so we have a unanimous All right, so next we have communications from our superintendent um, and any school committee members. I see Superintendent Harper on the line. Good evening, Council President. Good evening, Councilors, Mayor, and those in attendance. Uh, thank you for making time to hear from the school this evening. Um, I do want to um, first state that the governor has released a new budget. Um, the school department and the school committee are in the process of reviewing this. Um, there is a reduction to our Chapter 70 state aid um, and the overall reduction to the, there's a lot of background noise that sounds like somebody's enjoying a lovely bag of chips. I hope that is the case for somebody at home. <laughs> sounds like a nice way to start up your meeting uh, with a good bag of chips. Um, so the the um, net impact to the Greenfield Public Schools is quite significant from the mayor's budget um, with the total reduction um, totaling over $286,000. And it is um, under discussion by the school committee. They've asked for a full report since it had just been released literally hours before our last meeting. Um, so there's information coming back to the committee and then some further action and, of course, discussion with the city that will be required. Um, I do want to say that we have taken several um, cost saving measures, knowing that there are several unknowns in this year's budget. Um, the first being that remote learning, while not inexpensive and you cannot do without the key staff that we have, has some cost savings over in-person services, which is um, helpful in reductions that are unanticipated like this. And the second is that wherever possible positions that have uh, could go without filling, particularly non-instructional positions, um, like some in central office or administrative positions, have been kept vacant until we had final numbers from the state to avoid overburdening the taxpayer or putting additional requests forward um, pending final numbers. So again, this is now back uh, before the school committee for some decision and action. Um, but these large sums and changes are obviously very impactful when we're dealing with so many unknowns. And of course, this effort to bring students back in person, particularly special education students, and students that are high needs. Um, we are moving forward with our negotiations. I see the chair of the school committee is here as well, so she may want to comment. But the school committee and myself are moving forward with negotiations with the Greenfield Education Association. And those are um, moving forward. Uh, we're working very hard to take the school committee's plan of Remote Plus, which has many in-person services, and bring that into reality. So working through that process to do so. Um, right now we have agreements on in-person services for special education students and others 
for example, um, on the school grounds, outdoors, at children's home, outdoors, for example, like um, situations that are known to be the lowest risk possible, but ways that we can still deliver in-person <laughs> services. And we hope to continue extending that in the very, very near future. Um, if there are questions, I'm happy to address them, And but I do want to allow time if the chair wanted to add comments. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for having us, giving the schools time to report. Uh, I, I, I think the superintendent did an excellent job. I wouldn't add anything at this point, and I'd rather give you guys more time to ask questions if you have them. Thank you. And as you classify, I'm echoing. Um, as you classify uh, remote plus, so that means like a plan to kind of stagger students um, in the classroom as well as remote superintendent Harper. Um, the remote plus plan is a primarily based on remote services for all students. That was the vote of the school committee, um, but it adds in person services in a number of very important areas. The first is for special education and other high needs learners, including English language learners. Um, in the phase two, those students would come back to the building. We're currently in phase one with approval on phase 1A through our association and committee. In phase three, we bring back additional students and we have supervised remote learning services. And in phase four, we have additional in-person services. So what we did in the plan that the committee approved unanimously was start with remote, but then add in layer after layer of in-person services. And um, the committee has been eager, I might say anxious to implement those in-person services as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Ricketts has a question. Okay. Yes, yeah, Superintendent Harper, good evening. I have two questions. My first one is, I wanna talk about the tents that I see at the schools. I'm just wondering um, the purpose of them. Are they getting any use? I believe um, that there's electricity that's running to them. So I don't know if because of this pandemic, um, we got them free to help us out or, I mean, I know they're really pretty expensive to rent, so I just wondered if you can tell me more about the tents. Right, so um, we have a local vendor working us, with us on the tent. They did go through uh, Chapter 30B with it, which is the procurement law around this, so you have to follow process, which we did. Um, they aren't free, as most things are not, but um, again, working with local vendors, we did go with the best bid price on that, and I can say it's a significant reduction. Um, the city, including GSET, DPW maintenance, and the school uh, maintenance staff did a really, and our tech team, did a really great job bringing Wi-Fi and power to these tents. All I can tell you, Councillor Ricketts, is that our job was to be ready to implement our remote plus plan on day one. And that's where we stand. The tents are available. They are being used for outdoor special education evaluations. So these were, um, some of them were put on hold in the spring and they're essential services to our special education students. They were used for in-person meetings and we certainly hope that they get a lot more use in the coming days. I don't know about any of you, but if you set foot outside, it was 75 degrees today outside. New England weather is very strange and some days you feel like it's gonna snow and the next day it feels like summer. Indeed, we've had October snowstorms. Probably many of you remember the October uh, ice storm, snowstorm that we had um, some years back. So, you know, New England weather is unpredictable, but our goal was to have as many safe and flexible educational areas available to bring students back. And that we stand prepared to do that. So we're trying to meet our commitment to the safety of our teachers, as well as our students and um, deliver in-person services. We thought it was a very creative way to do that and we hope they get full use. So, I more than, perhaps myself more than anybody else. So I agree with you okay. there. Yeah, so I have a follow-up to that question and then I have a totally different question. So right now, do you have a date like 
November 1st or December 1st that they're going to come down? Or are you just going to keep them up? and see, I mean, we were oh, very tent, lucky. The to tents be. are currently scheduled to be up through uh, Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. Because af after Thanksgiving break, um, we'll, con we'll continue to assess it, but they're up for um, until Thanksgiving break, certainly. And then depending on weather, they'll come down at some point after that. Okay, and thank you for that. And then my next question was at the Green River School, um, is the boiler or the heater that we put in, is that, started and getting ready to be installed or so my understanding of the progress at green river and i have i'll confess that i'm so focused on the hvac systems and the schools in use that i haven't gotten an update from george in the last 30 days on this um, my fault not his um, but the last projection i heard was for february for green river school heating system to be up and running and available to us i will say that slowdowns in the um, supply chain and with vendors nationally has affected the timing of this project as with many projects, um, no fault of anybody in the city uh, trying to move that forward as quickly as possible. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I would like to just to briefly say about athletics. I know that there's a lot of questions um, because of neighboring districts and athletics um, you know, I think you may have seen in local media, there have been some cases in neighboring districts where students have tested positive. One student in particular um, in a neighboring district tested positive. Um, in those districts, they make decisions that are consistent with the Department of Education, um, the Department of Public Health, Board of Health decisions. And we do communicate quite regularly between athletic directors and so on. So some districts have paused athletics entirely or quarantine teams. Pioneer is currently taking a uh, pause from in-person services and returning to remote learning on a two-week basis. What I can say is that we certainly understand there's public interest in terms of public health um, and wanting to keep students safe and that we are continuing to follow all Department of Public Health, Board of Health, guidelines and Department of Education. So if a student, staff member, or community member here in Greenfield comes in contact with any person um, who's known to be COVID positive or symptomatic, we are following the uh, protocols. If that person needed to quarantine, they would do so. Um, we are really taking all possible precautions. We do have an obligation to protect um, private health information and in communication with our lead nurse, Pam Owen, our school physician and Board of Health, they do stress to us that we are not at liberty to share private health information um, broadly beyond those that are that need to know because they may have been affected by it. So I just want to say in general that although it's a challenge and it's a natural inclination, um, and Greenfield right now has no known cases, no suspected cases that uh, I'm not here, you know, trying to dance around any particular situation in Greenfield, really to do the opposite, to say we're taking all precautions, we are um, following protocols and working with public health officials. Um, but when kind of things like this come up, a lot of people, um, you know, are understandably asking questions, sort of want to know. Um, and just to reassure folks, we're following precautions, we're following protocols, we're working with public health officials. Quarantining anybody that needed to be quarantined is always part of that protocol. So just um, to put at ease anybody that may have heard and may have wondered, um, we, we're taking all possible precautions. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions? Seeing none at this time. Thank you very much, Superintendent Harper sure, and Chair sure. Peretti. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to welcome the mayor to the microphone um, and any city officers or employees that she has invited to speak as well. Welcome. Hi there. Good evening, everyone, and thank you uh, for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, a few updates. Uh, so early voting is going very well, and I want to take this opportunity to 
give a shout out to Kathy, Geneva, Tammy, everyone in the clerk's office who is handling it uh, so beautifully. Um, and we did add a couple more voting booths today because of the numbers that we're getting and so that people aren't um, having to uh, having to you know wait in line for so long. So the uh, the good news about this is that since the weekend over, that includes today's total, which is was ninety nine. People uh, over 500 people have voted early uh, at the city of Greenfield, and people seem to be handling it well. Um, the city did hire two new people as part-time workers, two really great women, both of them are Spanish speaking, um, who have been doing a great job for <laughs> only being on the job for. A, a very few days. So between them and the occasional fill in by Key and uh, Chief of Staff uh, Danielle and uh, Bill Staffus, uh, everyone seems to be getting the job done in, um, in Greenfield. And I'm very grateful to each and every one of them for that. And we do have um, police detail there uh, for the hours that the polls are open and it seems to be going just fine. Uh, we also have some good news on the census. Uh, we've had very good response in Greenfield. We surpassed 2010, which is extremely important. Uh, the number in, uh, I'd like to have seen it a little bit higher, but it is what it is. Uh, the number in 2010 was 74.9. 70 percent and I'm sorry yes 2010 and in 2020 it was 75.1 percent so as you know each person who is counted represents um, uh, a better advantage to us in money that gets returned uh, through various grants and so forth at the city level it's really important and I'm very happy to see this response um, little bit of update i think probably most of you are aware at this point that um valerie has uh valerie bird has uh retired as our health director and we wish her well i, I talked to her on her last day and she's looking forward to uh retirement with her husband who will uh, retire very soon as well Interim Health Director Jennifer Hoffman has taken over and is doing a really fantastic job, uh, particularly given the time that we've had. As you know, Jennifer was our um, COVID-19 liaison to all of the healthcare providers in our community, among other things. And um, she has taken well to this new role. So good, good shout out to her as well. And, um, we received a little bit of uh, uh, news uh, that I think ultimately will be positive for the city of Greenfield, although I haven't been able to totally assess it yet. But uh, I think most of you probably are aware that the French King decision has come in from the Supreme Judicial Court and uh, they ruled in favor of the planning board's um, a special permit that they granted. Um, so uh, I have <laughs> not heard back yet from the lawyers for the developer about their future plans, but I remain hopeful that I will have a call from him shortly. So uh, I don't have any further updates on what the intentions are for that property out there. Uh, we certainly understand that uh, retail, which is the permit that they've gotten, is, is a little bit up in the air. So. Stay tuned on that. And as soon as I know something that I feel like is really important for everyone to know uh, on the council, I, I will I will definitely let you know that. Uh, with regard to uh, the fire station, which is consuming a lot of everybody's time and a lot of good people are working very hard on that. Um, we, we don't have any major updates on that, except that the Ways and Means met last night and, and you will be hearing from them uh, at a future date. Um, we continue to work on it. 
uh, and I, as far as the negotiations for the property that we hope to locate the permanent on, uh, we're, we've gotten most of the information we need to be able to respond. We are still awaiting a little bit more information. So I would expect to certainly have some information, enough information to have gotten the ball rolling, but some of it has to do with investigating uh, different aspects of the property there and and what the environmental um, pieces are on that. And it's important for us to find that out up front. So um, that's what we're waiting on. Um, and I, as far as that purchase is concerned, I really can't discuss it. So um, hopefully you have, um, don't have any questions on that one. Uh, but I did want to make sure that you understood that this is going on um, weekly, for sure. Just uh, is a bit of a waiting game right now. And I think that is everything. Thank you. Um, I see the clerk would like to speak. Thank you, President Stemple. Um, I just wanted to add to the mayor's comments about voting that currently in this this is an estimate um, approximately 45 percent of the voters in greenfield have already cast a ballot um, wow. we, as of last friday the clerk's office had mailed out 5260 ballots i was estimating and i didn't have the numbers that the mayor spoke about at the door um, that we've already had about 500 people come and vote in person so i just wanted to let everyone know that and whoever is the lucky counselor to read the election warrant motion needs to take a sip of water before they do because they need to read the entire ballot <laughs> so just wanted to let you know lots of fun times <laughs> thank god it's not me <laughs> And I'll think of it as an honor and not a <laughs> and, and not a punishment um, for whoever I assign that to. Um, thank you very much. Uh, next, a comment from Councillor Ricketts. Um, yes, Mayor. I have um, two things. You spoke about two new hires, two women, but yeah. I missed um, what their positions were. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I honestly don't recall their titles. They are the two people that are working the door for early voters. Um, so that oh, what that means is they simply oh, okay. check people in and make sure that they are there for the um, for the purpose of voting. Um, and then they do all of the protocols around uh, making sure they're wearing their masks and the contact tracing piece and sort of directing traffic, as you will. We did learn early on uh, this week, during the weeks, not so much on the weekend, or at least I didn't hear about it on the weekend. Uh, people who have additional, and Kathy can certainly attest to this, uh, Monday uh, in our office, the phones were ringing off the hook. It seemed like everybody decided to get a birth certificate this past Monday or declare their marriage intentions. Uh, and a variety of other things. So <laughs> Kathy was doing double duty and I have no idea how she handled all of those, but um, so far so good. Uh, we have created a second, if you will, it's not a line per se, but if you envision the um, city hall and you know the ramp way up to the side door, which is where everybody can come in and do their vote. And we ask people to line up on that ramp off to the right is the um, is the uh, shorter uh, stairway. Um, we've turned that into a other business other than voting line. <laughs> so if people have made their appointments or if they have something to do besides vote, such as pay a tax bill uh, or an excise bill or any of those, they see the collector treasurer or go into the clerk for additional um, additional business that is now being handled in a better way. Um, rather than have those people wait in the line for voting, which has been very long, and then they get up to the door and they're 
and already frustrated by having to wait so long. And they say, all I wanted to do was, you know, get my birth, get a birth certificate or pay my taxes or something like that. So we've managed to work that out. Um, it's certainly our first go round with this sort of thing. And like I said before, I think we've handled it very, very well. Okay, thank you. And sure. I guess my next question would just be um, nothing about knowing how far in the negotiations you are, but I know that it may be up for a vote in November, and I'm hoping that it will be December if the negotiate negotiations are over then, because I certainly don't want to vote if we don't know the where the permanent building's going to be. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope that it'll still work in everyone's timeline if it's December or closer to when ev everything makes sense and we all have everything we need. Uh, I certainly do too. I, I share that um, times 10. I, I do have to remind counselors that this is a real estate transaction. It is for a, so that in itself, if you've ever bought a house or bought some other type of property can sometimes take time and have hang ups. And a lot of it has to do for with waiting for information and waiting for lawyers to um, work on the work that they have to work on. And um, I, right now, I don't see any reason why we can't have a, 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 at least a better picture by sometime in November. Um, it, it, November's just around the corner. <laughs> sometime in November, what, um, where we're at in that. But do keep in mind that in the interest of Greenfield and really in the interest of the property owner, we are doing some of the environmental assessment a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, and this is to protect Greenfield and to protect the owner as well. So um, that too requires waiting for people, the, you know, the experts that are hired to do that kind of assessment to fit it into their schedule. Make no mistake, I will certainly update um, update uh, President Stemple and others about timing and where we're at on it. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. But, but be patient with Thank it you. because it is, it is a real estate negotiation. It isn't, um, I'm not going in to buy a car. <laughs> yep. We're buying a significant piece of property for a significant amount of money and it all has to work. We don't want to repeat Riddell Street again. So we need to know what's there. Right. Uh, next, uh, Councillor Bottomley, please. Uh, thanks, President Stemple uh, and Mayor. Uh, my question is regarding your FY21 operating budget cuts, uh, which were just submitted. Um, <laughs> and first, I want to acknowledge uh, that cuts are extremely difficult, and I appreciate your hard work. Um, Thank you. In, in my first look at this, um, I'm concerned that one department is singled out to take the brunt of the cuts uh, to approximately the tune of 40% of the total. Uh, and on the surface, I feel that appears to go against the intentions or at least the spirit of the original FY21 budget that the council reviewed and approved. So I was hoping maybe you could provide some uh, background and maybe some uh, information on your decision-making process. Well, I think as you as you know, the people who the departments that <laughs> unfortunately when we have to go cutting budgets, the departments that take the biggest hint are some of the biggest departments uh, with the largest share of the budget. Um, and what I especially want people to know is that where you see cuts, they, uh, especially if it's positions, uh, so if you're looking at that salary and wages line, um, then uh, I just want you to know that those are people that were not hired. They were in the budget um, and, and could have been hired throughout uh, the summer or whenever we, you know, started hiring after after the budget was approved. 
but knowing the uncertainty of uh, our <laughs> final numbers, uh, we asked these departments to hold off and they did. And um, that was a good thing because we didn't hire people in um, June or July and then have to lay them off uh, now. So what it is primarily that type of thing that you see in almost every one of those cuts. And in the, I believe you're probably referring to the DPW. Uh, we certainly worked very closely with Marlo who, um, who did, um, very, I wouldn't say he was very willing to make the cuts. Nobody would be. He he's, uh, reminds us of what the ramifications could, of that could be come springtime. But we knew going into this that we might have to do that. And, uh, and now we're there and we're absolutely um, putting forth to you what we feel is the least amount of hurt <laughs> that we can do uh, and still maintain our budget within the guidelines that we need to maintain it in. So that's really all I can tell you. Um, you know, I just want to reiterate that it really didn't mean that anybody has lost their job. It means that people were simply not, those positions were not filled. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Forgey, please. Mayor, um, yesterday at the 11th hour, um, the council received um, copies of a letter that was sent to you from attorney, I believe it was Peter Lake. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and I wondered if um, if you could comment and tell us what you think that is about. <laughs> um, yes, that, and that, no. That's an easy question, I know. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not looking at it right now as such an easy answer. Uh, because it isn't a terribly easy answer. I did immediately forward it on to uh, our lawyer who is handling uh, the real estate transactions. The questions, as um, as you all must have uh, gathered from reading the email, was from the law. The it happens to be a local lawyer from uh, Northampton, and I don't remember the firm at the moment. Um, but he was hired by Billy Walker, who is the owner of the Well Street property that um, that is also in the mix of potential sites. So um, I I read through the questions. I have not had an opportunity to talk to the lawyer today about it. I just <laughs> I got it at the same time you did, so it was very late in the day, and. Um, I think that most of them are just um, a little bit of he's only getting one side of the story. He's getting Mr. Walker's side of the story. Um, as you'll recall, the history of the original offer that we made to Mr. Walker, uh, he didn't. He chose not to even um, respond uh, to um, to my offer. And as it turned out. Um, the offer was for the two buildings, one on Well Street, one on Main Street, and um, with a different type of plan involved. And it turns out that we really can't fund a, and we didn't know that at the time, fund a public service, com a public safety complex, which was the plan. Uh, but we really are able to build truly only the phase one. Um, so on the one hand, it was, um, a blessing in a way. Uh, it led us down a slightly different path because at the end of the day, the property that we're working with was next in line as the better property. And uh, if we decide if something goes wrong there, the Well Street property is certainly still in the mix. Um, and uh, that's really all I can say. Uh, the other questions I think are better answered by our lawyer and I have not had an opportunity to talk to him. 
Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, and Councillor Elmer, please, you have a question for Clerk Scott. Yeah, I think it's really easy. Um, I voted by mail and I, my, I can't find an answer uh, on when those uh, ballots are going to be counted. So all ballots that are cast in Greenfield, whether it be by, by mail or in person, are counted on election day at the polls. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And next, Councillor Ricketts, please. Yes, thank you. This is just a follow-up for Councillor Bottomley. Um, I'm glad that he had brought up the salary, the DPW, because I just want to make sure I'm understanding the meeting I listened to recently about the temporary fire station. And I thought the DPW were going to have a big role in doing work for the temporary. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that whoever was left from DPW, that was enough staff to be able to move forward with the temporary or or if you would need to, you know, fill those positions after all. So that's a question for me, uh, Councillor Ricketts? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I didn't well, even look to see if Marlo was on, sorry. <laughs> Marlo is not on. Um, so actually uh, everybody who's at the DPW right now um, is still got a job. <laughs> As I as I said um, when I answered the question earlier, uh, the positions that you see there are positions that were not filled, meaning right. nobody had that job to begin with. They were items in the budget. We have to count them, and they were there. Uh, we did not fill those positions. So he has assured us that, um, and I think he would tell you this if he were on tonight, he has assured us that uh, there will be staff to fulfill those roles, and okay. we're very mindful of that. And but as I said, also uh, he just, you know, come spring when we need a lot of people working on parks and so forth, uh, we're going to be a little bit of we're going to be a little, little bit slower in getting that work done. Um, unless you know there's a miracle <laughs> and we can fill those positions so okay. i think probably that's that's really the only answer i have for you now i think people should be um okay. comfortable in the knowledge that they they have staff to do the work and they will play hopefully a very big role in that in the temporary fire station and will result in cost savings for us on that versus hiring uh, the necessary people to do the job I mean, we already have them hired and they're on city staff. So let's um, take advantage of that. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Great. Uh, next, Councillor Gilmore, please. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I was having problems earlier. Thank you. Um, I had a question from a constituent who, um, Somebody in her household tried to participate in early voting, and she told me that the 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 wait was very very long. I tried to explain to her that you know we're trying to de-densify all these public buildings because we need to maintain, you know, proper social distancing. We need to protect the health of our our neighbors and you know our staff in the office. Um, she was not satisfied with my answer and i would i i don't want to just tell her you know that i i can't help her but it, it, this uh -huh. is not an area where i have the authority to make changes um who can i refer her to to get some answers to her questions yeah i'll let kathy handle that because i don't know exactly what she's talking about so uh i mean there isn't there's not much we can do about the lines it's one person in one person out but we did and you might assure her of this if she hadn't had an opportunity to vote um that as i said today we added a uh, two additional booths so kathy can exp i <laughs> i didn't check in at the end of the day to see how that <laughs> went because we did it sort of midday uh, when we realized that it was really needed. So I'll let Kathy fill us in on how that might help. So we did we did change things today. We do have a couple of booths in the hallway. Um, 
to attempt to get people in and out quicker, it seems to have worked. Uh, if Sheila, you'd like to have either your constituent or their family member give me a call, I will talk to them, find out what day they came, how it was working that day, you know, see if they want to come back, let them know the differences. Um, if they would like, they can always request a ballot be mailed to them, and then they can either deliver the ballot back to the office, deliver the ballot and drop it in the secure drop box outside of the accessibility ramp door here at City Hall, or they can always come and vote in person. But the short message you can give if, if they call and they ask for me, um, I will do my best to get to their call. They may have to leave a message. I may have to call them back, but I will I will get a hold of them. Okay, I'll write to our letter now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good, Good question, Sheila. Thank you for that. Any other questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Happy to do it. Uh, we did not invite any other city employees to speak. So now we have our public comment. Um, and I'm just going to explain once again, you still have your three minutes to speak. Uh, now we have the luxury of a virtual sign-in book, and that is our chat box. Um, so if you are unfamiliar, you find your chat box. If you look to the bottom of your screen, there's three little dots in between share and the red button that makes you leave the meeting. So if you click on those three dots, you should be able to find your chat box. Um, and if not, then my screen is different than yours. Uh, so you're going to sign in by typing your full name and your address in the chat box, and then I'll call you in order to come off mute and to speak. Um, so at this point in time, if there's anyone who wants to speak during public comment, please sign in. We can go ahead and get started with Pamela Goodwin um, and thereafter continue signing in and I will call you when Pamela is through. Hi, good evening. Thank you for giving me this chance to talk to you. Um, I believe the mayor and the clerk have answered some of my concerns or questions about the early voting. Um, I had at least about an hour long wait when I voted on the 17th. Um, and then I went back because I was assigned to um, hold up a yes, yes on question two. Um, and so when I was there on Monday, Channel 22 was there. Um, I spoke with her quickly as she left, and she said she heard sometimes people were waiting two hours. I don't know if that was on a Sunday because I was uh, with grandkids on Sunday. So I'm. I, I, we also, between the officer, I believe it was, I want to say Sergeant Romney or something like that, between myself and he, we're having to turn away a lot of people who had birth certificate issues, wanted to pay the bill. Uh, they were not happy. And um, I guess for the most part, we were like, well, try coming at 9.30 or 10. Um, and so I'm glad to see, uh, number one, you've added some other places where people can vote. And uh, two, people maybe will figure out that they can come up there on the um, short end of the ramp and, uh, and, and attend to some business. I guess one of my questions would be maybe in the future, um, second in early voting site, or maybe have the front of the building open for other purposes. I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether that would be a suggestion. Um, at the same time, when I was trying to figure out what the hours were for early voting, I called the mayor's office, didn't reach anybody. The community information line didn't get back to me. Um, and finally, the clerk, I think, called to me or someone did. And I said, why couldn't I find it on the website? And uh, she said, you click on department, then you click on Kirk, clerk, and then there's the early voting information. I said, oh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't do that. I was just looking on the main website where it was all about absentee ballots and how to register and 
And um, I asked if I could speak with an IT person, and um, I was told they don't they don't take phone calls. And uh, whoever, uh, if they got the message, they didn't call me back. But I just thought that that would be, you know, like the quicker, the faster as far as getting on a website and trying to assess. I knew the dates, but I did not know the times. Um, and uh, the clerk was very helpful. I wrote them all down because I'm supposed to go back out there and stand with my sign um, some of the time. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, and I don't know, this might be a little off topic, but um, because we're so close to the Fair and Care Center, I am affiliated with an agency called Dignity Alliance. Today I called attorney Ralston um, and we had a nice talk because he's very involved and we uh, at Dignity Alliance are very concerned about um, you know, the state granting the closure. A lot of backdoor things are going on. The stakeholders and their families have not been told much. Um, and so we're fighting against that. Um, and if anybody wants more information, um, I don't know, maybe I can figure out, um, you know, how to get you information on that. I know today Attorney Ralston asked me uh, to go ahead and get a hold of Senator Comerford, and the more the merrier because uh, the senator is very aware of it. Um, Thank you, Pamela. So that time means it. that you're three oh, minutes. I, is I, up. I know you're fine. I just wanted to make you aware. I just wanted to make you aware. No, that's so fine. You can finish up what you were saying, and then um, that is the three minutes. Right. No, that's okay. That's just that it's right next door. We care what's going on over there. I know we do. And there's been numerous articles in the paper about it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Pamela. Any other takers for public comment? I'll give you another minute to sign into our virtual sign-in book. I'm not seeing anybody. All right, so tonight we have no public hearings or second readings. We will move on to our motions, orders, and resolutions. On page 13, please, may I please have Treasurer Disorder read? Oh, I'm sorry, this is not a punishment. This is an honor, right? <laughs> And if you're unprepared, I can call in somebody else. Hold on, I have to get my other device to be reading that. No worries, no worries, Councilor Disorder. I'll call in uh, uh, Councilor Bottomley, please, to read on page 13. Cool. Hopefully I can make this through without a uh, dog. <laughs> <laughs> For counselors, it's totally fine. <laughs> and if we need somebody else, you all are just making excuses for why you yeah, can't right. this. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go hide someplace, it looks like. <laughs> I can jump in if you need me okay. to. Well, now that poor Councillor Bottomley has completely moved. <laughs> okay, I've got it. Uh, this is the warrant for the 2020 state election. And this is to the constables of Greenfield, the uh, city of Greenfield. Uh, greetings in the name of the Commonwealth. You are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said city who are qualified to vote in primaries to vote at precincts one through nine at the Greenfield High School Gymnasium, 21 Bar Avenue, on Tuesday, the third day of November, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose, to cast their votes in the state election for the candidates for the following offices, electors of president and vice president for these United States, senator in Congress for this Commonwealth, representative in Congress, second district, Councillor, 8th District, Senator in General Court, Hampshire, Franklin, and Worcester District, Representative in General Court, Franklin District, 
Register of Probate, Franklin County, Franklin Council of Governments, Franklin County. Question one, law proposed by initiative petition. Do you approve the law summarized below on which no vote was taken by the Senate or the House of Representatives on or before May 5th, 2020? Summary. This proposed law would require that motor vehicle owners and independent repair facilities be provided with expanded access to mechanical data related to vehicle maintenance and repair. Starting with model year 2022, the proposed law would require manufacturers of motor vehicles sold in Massachusetts to equip any such vehicles that use telemetric systems, systems that collect and wirelessly transmit mechanical data to a remote server. With a standardized open access data platform, owners of motor vehicles with telematic systems would get access to mechanical data through a mobile device application. With vehicle owner authorization, independent repair facilities, those not affiliated with the manufacturer and independent dealerships would be able to retrieve mechanical data from and send commands to the vehicle for repair, maintenance and diagnostic testing. Under the proposed law, manufacturers would not be allowed to require authorization uh, before owners or repair facilities could access mechanical data stored in a motor vehicle's onboard diagnostic system, except through an authorization process standardized across all makes and models and administrated by the entity unaffiliated with the manufacturer. The proposed law would require the Attorney General to prepare a notice for prospective motor vehicle owners and leases, leases explaining telematic systems and the proposed law's requirements concerning access to the vehicle's mechanical data. Under the proposed law, dealers would have to provide prospective owners with and prospective owners would have to acknowledge receipt of the notice before buying or leasing a vehicle. Failure to comply with these notice requirements would subject motor vehicle dealers to sanctions by the applicable licensing authority. Motor vehicle owners and independent repair facilities could enforce this law through state consumer protection laws and recover civil penalties of the greater of treble damages or 10,000 per violation. A yes vote would provide motor vehicle owners and independent repair facilities with expanded access to wirelessly transmitted mechanical data related to their vehicle's maintenance and repair. A no vote would make no change in the law governing access to vehicles with wirelessly transmitted mechanical data. Question two, law proposed by initiative petition. Do you approve of a law summarized below which no vote was taken by the Senate or the House of Representatives on or before May 5th, 2020? Summary. This proposed law would implement a voting system known as ranked choice voting in which voters rank one or more candidates by order of preference. Ranked choice voting would be used in primary and general elections for all Massachusetts statewide offices, state legislative offices, federal congressional offices, and certain other offices beginning in 2022. Ranked choice voting would not be used in elections for president, county commissioner, or regional district school committee member. Under the law proposed, voters would be counted in a series of rounds. In the first round, if one candidate received more than 50% of first place votes, that candidate would be declared the winner and no other rounds would be necessary. If no candidate received more than 50% of the first place votes, then the candidate or candidates who received the fewest first place votes would be eliminated. And in the next round, each vote for an eliminated candidate instead be counted towards the next highest ranked candidate on their voters ballot. Depending on the number of candidates, additional rounds of counting could occur with the last place candidate or candidates in each round being eliminated and the votes for an eliminated candidate going to the voters next choice out of remaining candidates. A tie for last place in any round would be broken by comparing the tied candidate's support in earlier rounds. Ultimately, the candidate who was out of the remaining candidates, the preference of a majority of voters would be declared the winner. Ranked choice voting would be used only in races where a single candidate is to be declared the winner and not in races where there are more than one person is to be elected. Under the proposed law, if no candidate received more than 50% of first place votes in the first round, the rounds of ballot counting necessary for ranked choice voting would be conducted in a central tabulation facility. 
At the facility, voters' rankings would be entered into a computer, which would then be used to calculate the results of each round of the counting process. The proposed law provides that candidates in a statewide or district election would have at least three days to request a recount. The Secretary of State would be required to issue regulations to implement the proposed law and conduct a voter education campaign about the rank choice voting process. The proposed law would take effect on January 1st, 2022. A yes vote would create a system of rank choice voting in which voters would have the option to rank candidates in order of preference and votes would be counted in rounds, eliminating candidates with the lowest votes until one candidate has received a majority. A no vote would make no change in the laws governing voting and how votes are counted. Question three, shall the city of Greenfield accept sections three to seven inclusive of chapter four B of the general laws as approved by the legislative body, a summary of which appears below. Summary, sections three to seven of chapter 44 B of general laws of Massachusetts, also known as the Community Preservation Act, establishes a dedicated fund source, funding source to enable cities and towns to one, acquire, create, and preserve open space, which includes land for park and recreational uses and the protection of public drinking water, well fields, aquifers, and recharge areas, wetlands, farmland, forests, marshes, scenic areas, wildlife preserves, and other conservation areas. Two, acquire, preserve, and restore historic buildings and sites, and three, create, preserve, and restore affordable housing. In the city of Greenfield, the funding source for these community preservation purposes will be a surcharge of 1% on the annual property tax levy assessed on real property commencing in fiscal year 2022, July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. If approved, the following will be exempt from the surcharge. One, property owner and occupied as a domicile by any person who qualifies for low-income housing or low or moderate income senior housing in Greenfield defined in section two of said act. Two, for 100,000 of the value of each taxable parcel of residential real property. Three, for 100,000 of the value of each taxable parcel of class three commercial property and class four industrial property is defined in section 2A of said chapter 59. A taxpayer receiving a regular property tax abatement or exemption will also receive a pro rata reduction in service per charge. A community preservation committee will be established by ordinance to study community preservation resources, possibilities, and needs, and to make an annual recommendations to the Greenfield City Council on spending the funds. Upon recommendation of the community preservation committee, at least 10% of the funds for each fiscal year will be spent or reserved for later spending on each of the Act's three community preservation purposes, one, open space, two, historic resources, and three, affordable housing. In the city of Greenfield, hereof fail not and make return of this warrant with your doings thereon at the time and place of said voting, given under our hands this 21st day of October, 2020. Read it all. Yeah, and then you have to sign the, I mean, you have to read the undersigned. Oh, okay. City Council President Ashley Stemple, as authorized by vote of the Greenfield City Council by Constable posting October 22nd, 2020. Thank you. President Stemple? Yep. Motion needs to be read, please. Mm -hmm. I, what did you say? Motion needs to be read. He read the ballot. But a motion oh, yeah. needs to be made. Yeah. So, Councillor, Councillor Bottomley, all you need to read now is page 13. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there we go. Uh, I move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council hereby approves the attached state election warrant for November 3rd, 2020, and further authorizes the city. Council President to sign said warrant on behalf of the City Council. Second. And who is that second? Councilor Fee? No. Councilor no. I thought it was Mayo, but I'll second it. No, that, okay. you are you are correct. 
Seconded by Councillor Mayo. Uh, discussion? <laughs> uh, we uh, will move to a roll call vote, please, Clerk Scott. Councillor Jarvis? Yes. Councillor Gwynn? Yes. Councillor Disorder? Yes. Councillor Bottomley? Yes. Councillor Dolan? Yes. Councillor Gilmore? Yes. Councillor Wheeler? Councillor Wheeler? Your audio um, is not working, Councillor Wheeler. Can't hear you. He said, I, I believe he agrees. He says he's saying yes. <laughs> OK, we'll give him a yes. Councillor Mayo? Councillor Mayo. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. President Stemple. Yes. Unanimously hey. passed. Well, there we, I can't believe how soon the election is, it's crazy. Um, all right, so we have next, I, we'll, we'll see if Vice President Wheeler's audio works. Yes, I'm here, can you hear me? All right, perfect, yes. All right, so Vice President Wheeler, please on page 17. Thank you, President Stemple. I move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council approve the payment of prior year FY20 invoice for Equifax in the amount of $75 to be paid from the FY21 Parking Human Resources budget. Second. Thank you, Mayo. Mayor, second. Second from Mayo. Discussion, or I'm sorry, report from committee. Uh, unanimous positive recommendation from Ways and Means. Uh, this, I think uh, one of these Equifax invoices had um, slipped through the cracks before, uh, and we'll hope it doesn't happen again, but it's, uh, it's a small one and we should pay it. Um, in particular, I'm here. It does seem to always be Equifax that's slipping between the cracks. Was there any questions asked about why we seem to be uh, getting this consistent error? I don't know if it, they can send it somewhere more obvious to us or. Um, if Director Gilman is on the line, I would refer us to to her. I don't think she's here. Yeah. It's really, oh, I am. oh, there she is. Been here. I'm trying to start my video. I was trying to save bandwidth. Um, so it is an Equifax. This one is actually from HR. It was in the HR department. And it has to do with unemployment and representation, representing the city at, at hearings. I see. Um, and so I, I believe it's more due to COVID than anything. I see. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, I will move to a vote. Clerk Scott. Councillor Jarvis? Yes. Councillor Gwynn? Yes. Councillor Disorder? Yes. Councillor Bottomley? Yes. Councillor Dolan? Yes. Councillor Gilmore? Yes. Councillor Wheeler? Yes. Councillor Mayo. Councillor Hirschfeld. Councillor Hirschfeld. He's muted. Thank you, Councillor Elmore. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. President Stemple. Yep. 
The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Councillor Gwynne, please, on page 21. I move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council, pursuant to Charter Section 2-10, affirms the following appointment by the Mayor to the Board of Health, Alyssa Valbana, for the unexpired term ending December 31st, 2022. Second, Thank you. Fourth, Thank you. I heard second from 4G. Uh, report from committee, please, Councillor Gwynne. This did not come before oh, committee right. based on timing. Yep. Uh, so we have no report and we have no recommendation. That is right. Um, I happen to know Alyssa personally, and I do believe that she would be great for this role. Um, and I know that that's also why the mayor made that selection. Um, so I'm willing to speak on her behalf and I'm happy to endorse her for this role. Um, any discussion from councillors? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote, please, Clerk Scott. Councillor Jarvis? Yes. Councillor Gwynn? Councillor Disorder? Yes. Councillor Bottomley? Yes. Councillor Dolan? Yes. Councillor Gilmore? Yes. Councillor Wheeler? Yes. Councillor Mayo? Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld? Yes. Councillor Elmer? Yes. Councillor Forgy? Yes. Councillor Ricketts? Yes. President Stemple? Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we do not have, at least not that I'm aware of, presentation of petitions or similar papers tonight. Uh, would any of our subcommittees like to report out? I see Councillor Jarvis, would you like to report out for the fire station building committee? Yes, I would. Um, I'd like to apologize. I didn't get the uh, the subcommittee meeting out. Uh, I just figured that I would do it here. I've been trying to, within a 24-hour span, keep everybody updated. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just quick updates, things that uh, transpired. Dennis Rocks, Ross, the architect, um, should be um, receiving his finalized contract by the city and um, then be on board with a contract. Um, but he has been doing our architectural work all along. Um, so the estimated cost of the um, of the temporary fire station is $1.9 million. Um, that's on the high side. Uh, we, we are er erring on the high side of it. Uh, doesn't mean that it's gonna come in at that. It'll probably come in under that. Um, as the mayor has stated, the DPW has said that they can do um, a lot of the utility work for us. Um, which will be a savings. Uh, nothing comes free. We still have to pay their salaries, but it's cheaper than prevailing wages. Um, so hopefully that'll be um, some cost savings there. Um, also, we um, once the scope and conceptual drawings are done, we'll be going out to um, doing making our doing our RFP sometime in December, hopefully. Um, with an open of the RP, uh, RFP sometime in January. Um, other good cost-saving news is Eversource has um, said that they would put in the two poles that we need and put in the drops that we need at no cost to the city of Greenfield, which is good news. It also saves us some money there. Um, also, cost savings measures is that we're not connecting the buildings, so they do not have to be sprinklered under under mass mass general law. They would have to be sprinklered if they were tied all tied together because it'd be over seventy five hundred square feet. So that's going to be a savings um, by keeping them separate. And just if people didn't know, we are going to be using both parking lots, the upper and lower, for the structures. There'll be a bay on the top parking lot a bay on the bottom parking lot along with the administration offices. So that's what I have for an update real quick. Um, I will have an update tomorrow coming out for the built full building committee. Probably I hope to have it to the councilors by Friday morning. So Thank you it. very much, Councillor Jarvis. Uh, Councillor Gwynne, please. 
I just wanted to uh, reiterate that um, we in appointments and ordinances are in a bit of a holding pattern waiting on um, the mayor's office to fulfill a couple of items that we need to move forward. And secondly, um, there was a question on um, the appointments that uh, came up uh, from the last meeting and in chairs it was discussed that if anyone has questions uh, concerning a specific individual from any of the appointments that are coming forward, please reach out to the chair, whomever that may be at the time, and them in coordination with the mayor's office who made the appointment, will try to get that information in a time period uh, specifically about the situation that was brought up. Um, so when we bring it to full council or to subcommittee, uh, that um, information can already be looked at and have some kind of answer. That's all. Great, thank you. Um, and Vice President Wheeler, please. Very briefly, I just wanted to thank those counselors who uh, hopped on the Ways and Means meeting last night to listen to our uh, discussion about the fire uh, station projects and encourage anyone who didn't to uh, go back to uh, GCTV, to the recording, uh, to listen to it. Um, we tried to run the gamut. Um, of the discussion and um, we do expect to have a vote either in November or it's looking like uh, December. Um, and uh, what we discussed at the meeting last night um, would make a good primer um, for that vote. That's all. Thank you. Um, I'm curious if Councillor Dolan has an update for the council from the library building committee. Yes, um, we haven't had a meeting since um, you and I exchanged emails about this, uh, President Stemple, but just to fill the rest of the, the council in, um, the library building committee uh, plan is going well. We're really working hard on the systems right now um, in terms of the, the heat, the HVAC and electrical and solar and that kind of thing. Um, and we also took a vote at our last meeting um, to pursue LEED Silver certification, which opens up um, some extra grant money if we can get the building to qualify for that from the state. So everything's going well. We're right on schedule and right on budget. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you everybody for sharing uh, your reports. We have no unfinished business, no old business, uh, new business, we have some first readings, please. Vice President Wheeler. Thank you, Madam President. City Council first reading, October 21st, 2020. Reduce the FY21 general fund operating budget appropriation of $53,879,442 by the amount of 370000 for a revised FY21 operating budget total of $53,509,442. Authorize increase fund 1585, ambulance revolving fund spending limit $40,000 for a revised spending limit of $120,000 for the fiscal year 2021. Appropriate $32,423 for GSET fiber and equipment. Appropriate $42,900 from the General Stabilization Fund for the appraisal of right of ways along Wisdom Way. Thank you. Um, and so next we have some zoning amendment proposals and I just wanna kind of explain that a little bit. So previously we had been doing a zoning amendment proposals as an initiation process with the council where we would do it under motions and orders. Um, the council would vote to initiate uh, and then it would go off in this process. Looking further into, uh, into the charter and also state law regarding zoning amendments, we found that it was unnecessary to do that. However, there's still a component of awareness and transparency for the community. And so we decided instead of having counselors vote to initiate, was, which is unnecessary, um, once, a, <clears throat> excuse me, once a zoning amendment is 
uh, submitted to the clerk's office, whether it be from a counselor, whether it be from a petition or whether it be from a constituent or resident of the city of Greenfield, um, we will place it here under new business so that it can be read into the record and everyone can be made aware of it. Um, the time essentially begins the moment it was submitted to the clerk's office. And so thank you to Tammy for including those dates on here as well. So I will have Councillor Dolan please read these zoning amendment proposals on page 50, please. All right, just one second. Let me find that page. So um, this is page 50, starting with the following zoning amendments. Correct. Amend chapter 200, zoning section, and therefore. Okay, following zoning amendment proposals have been submitted to the Greenfield City Council for consideration. Amend chapter 200, zoning section 4.2, C19, rural residential by removing the tier one limitation and amend section 4.2C, RC district. Uh, which is also the rural residential, by adding a new number 21 under subsection C to permit marijuana product, product manufacturing and marijuana retailer as accessory uses to the use marijuana cultivator pursuant to 7.17. Submitted September 29th, 2020 by Jeff Coulson and Emily Seelman. Amendments to Chapter 200, Zoning Section 4.13, Floodplain District F, submitted October 13th, 2020 by the Planning Board. And finally, amendments to the Zoning Ordinance relative to low impact development techniques to include amendments, amendment to Section 6.11, Driveways and Entrances of the Zoning Ordinance, submitted October 13th, 2020 by the Planning Board. Thank you very much. Um, and so next we have motions for reconsideration. Uh, I think that uh, it could be a very uh, excellent uh, session with the president. I don't know if that's someone, I think that's just someone talking on their phone. Um, all right, so uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So move, Ricketts. Second, second Moved by Ricketts, seconded by Gwynn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right, this meeting is adjourned at 8.21 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Uh, have a great night. Thank you. Good night.